Hello everyone, my name is Jonathan Zhang from the Basis Bugle and today we have our wonderful new college counselor, Mrs. Levin. Hello. Hi, Jonathan. Uh, you know, she's new to the school and unfortunately we had to see Mrs. Martin as well as Mrs. Estes leave, but you know, I'm sure she's just gonna be as great as them. So I thought it'd be great to do an interview with her and get to know her better because of her current situation. So I think we'll first, first start with her background. So where did you go to high school and what was your high school experience like? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, thanks so much, Jonathan. And mm -hmm. super happy to, to do an interview and uh, get to know the students a little more and hopefully they can get to know me. Get to know me. Um, so just a little background in high school. Um, I went to a high school called Granite Bay High School, which is a high school um, outside of Sacramento area. So in Northern California, um, similar to basis in a way, it was very um, academically focused, um, very strong with that. Um, at high school, I was involved in the arts program. So I did a lot of arts and ceramics and art history type of things. Um, and I also was in the school yearbook. So that was kind of my big extracurricular. I was uh, the copy editor of the yearbook my senior year. So that was something I, I enjoyed a lot too. All right, sounds cool. Yeah. Now, was your high school like really big in terms of like students there? Um, it was about, I want to say like, maybe like 2000. Oh, oh 2000. Yeah, it's pretty, you pretty like big, the big cool. environment? What's that? Sorry. You like the big environment with like 2000 kids? Or yeah, no? um, you know, I did just because in a way there were like a lot of different uh, people and kind of a lot, like a lot of different programs with the arts and oh. uh, music and all of that. So that was really cool. But yeah, it was a good, it was a nice school and a good environment, so. All right, sounds cool. Yeah. Were you stressed during high school or were you like pretty happy during high school? Um, you know, I was I definitely um, like uh, kind of academically focused as well. Mm -hmm. So I would say I was sometimes could be stressed um, with classes. And, you know, that's one reason that I really like helping out, you know, kids in high school now and in college and uh, advising and counseling and everything just to kind of help manage the stress load and, mm -hmm you know, provide that support too. Exactly, yeah, we definitely yeah. need that for sure. Now, you know, when you transitioned to college, like where did you go and like, how was your experience in college like? Yeah, definitely, so I was able, I was super excited because I, for a long time, I was in, you know, Sacramento area and I really was interested in uh, UC Davis and had very familiar with Davis and gone there a lot. So I was really excited when I got in there. Um, so I, I went to Davis for my undergrad, um, I majored, in American studies there, which was really cool because it was kind of an interdisciplinary major, which combined a lot of my interests like cultural studies um, and, and writing and history and all these things. Um, I also, I minored in uh, professional writing. So I got a strong writing background there and really enjoyed that. Um, yeah, I just, I love, again, I love downtown Davis and I love the environment. Um, so I, I'm always excited to to talk to students in the college counseling about like the UC experience and, and what that's like. Now, college is obviously, is it more stressful or less stressful than like high school, would you think, would you say? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, I found that, I just thought that college was really just so much fun and mm -hmm. like new experiences in a way because in high school, in a way you don't have as much opportunity to like research different things or, you know, study different subjects that you might be really interested in. And when I got to college, I had the opportunity to like deeply research, you know, these different issues. I was able to do it like a thesis project um, on my topic was uh, women in music kind of throughout history and uh, different type of movements like that. So that was really interesting for me and fun. Um, you also just meet so many new people, interesting professors and friends and you know, all these cool, you have opportunities to um, do different fun things too, like the college radio station was something I, I checked out while I was there and that was really fun. Um, again, like the arts program there. So you really just kind of have a, a widened horizon of opportunities once you get to college, I'd say. Um, and also after college, I also went, um, I got my master's degree and I went um, for that to ASU. So oh, okay. yeah, so I also, I just love, I love being in school and, and continuing with that. So I, I did my master's there in um, education. So that was really interesting as well. Now, 
would you say like forming relationships with like other students and like professors is like easier in college or like much simpler? Yeah, um, that's a good, that's a really good question. I think that when, when you're in college, you kind of have the unique opportunity to, again, meet these professors um, that are really like, you know, scholars in their fields um, that have written books and have done all these different cool things you might be interested in. And so many of them are super, you know, open and want to help you. Um, and also in my major, American Studies, it was really nice because we had kind of small, um, like, classes, you know, where we'd have, I'd take GEs, right, where, you know, there'd be a lot of kids in that, but then my smaller major class would have maybe, you know, 10 or so uh, folks in a class with the professor, so we could really, you know, learn from their research and talk to them one-on-one, -on -one. so I think in college, you really have that neat opportunity. Cool. Now, yeah. do you like, like, small classrooms, or do you prefer, like, the bigger setting, like, you know, 400, 500 kids of, like, a UC classroom, for example? Right, right. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I think that the large lecture classes can be interesting and, and can be really great experiences as well. A lot of them that I had, um, I also had like a TA, right, or a smaller discussion section that would meet, which um, you folks will have in college as well. So that you kind of have a smaller environment with that. Um, but I'd say I really, I most enjoyed my smaller classes where you could have discussions and um, really like you know kind of share your thoughts and learn from everybody so all right and you know basis has like you know pretty small classroom sizes do you think that's like an advantage for high schoolers or no yeah that's i think that i think that it is an advantage in that it allows you to kind of participate mm -hmm. like actively participate in your classes you know and and that you all have experiences you know whether you're in I know like speech and debate or these types of classes where you get this great experience of um, like communicating and, and talking during a class and that'll help you when you go into college and you have discussion sections or you have these small groups where you have that chance too. Oh, okay, cool. My, my internet was kind of unstable, so my bad. Um. Oh, sure, no problem. I see, I hear you. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. We're back on track now. So uh, we just discussed basis of small classroom oh. and let's continue on with the basis theme. So what attracted you to come work for basis? Yeah. yeah definitely. So um, I first uh, worked for basis. I think it was the, I want to say 2018, 2019 year. Actually, I was um, finishing up my master's program in education at ASU. Um, so I had the opportunity to both work at BASIS and teach. I was the um, second grade humanities uh, subject expert set there. So I was able to teach while I was finishing up my master's program. So that was just a really awesome opportunity for me. And I was super excited um, just because I've heard about, you know, BASIS's really strong academics. Then again, kind of introducing kids to a lot of research and these kind of, um, you know, awesome topics like that. And, and so I was just super excited to be involved with the, with the schools and, and start there. And then I taught after that as well. And then this year I saw the opportunity to become a college counselor and advisor. And that's something I also enjoyed doing. Um, I, I worked as a, a kind of as a, a, like as a first year advisor um, for students in the honors program at, when I was at Davis. And I really enjoyed that opportunity. And I've always been interested in um, counseling practices and like mindfulness and all of this type of thing. So I thought that would be a great um, combination. Nice, nice. Now, do you like your experience so far at BASIS, specifically like BASIS Peoria High School? Yeah, definitely. You know, it's been very uh, welcoming and, and helpful. And I've, I know it's, you know, a diff different situation for everybody when we're online, um, you know, at the start of this year. But I've really kind of been enjoying uh, utilizing technology with all the students and being able to communicate that way has been, I know it can be challenging, but I, so as someone who really enjoys technology, it's, it's kind of been a cool experience as well. Nice, nice. Okay, it's good to hear. Now, you know, comparing your yep. two basic experiences, like which one do you say is like better? What are the pros and cons of both of them? Yeah, um, you know, I think 
both both have a lot of pro pros and a lot of things that I definitely enjoy. Um, my first first year teaching for basis, I was um, a teacher and um, working with I was in the with the younger kiddos. So I was in second grade um, there, and I enjoyed that. Um, it was really meaningful to, to be able to work with all those students and make a difference. And, and now it's actually funny because some of the uh, 12th grade seniors that are in my class, they have like little siblings who are in my class for second grade or maybe third grade. So, so it's funny to have that connection. Um, so I really like both of the roles. I mean, the counseling role is something, again, that I'm really kind of interested in and, and really kind of wanted to to go into an education, this kind of advising and, and counseling role. So I was super excited to, to have the opportunity to do that. All right, that's wonderful to hear then. Now, yes. you know, with your current job and like with having to be online all day, is it like busy? Is it like stressful being online all day or something like that? Yeah, you know, I, I'd say it's definitely, it's busy, um, but it's also, again, I just, I really enjoy working with technology. So it's, it's fun for me to kind of um, work in teams and, and integrate like Flipgrid and other apps and everything that, that I enjoy using. And I know a lot of the students are familiar with and like too. So it's busy, but it's also kind of gives me a chance to be creative um, in terms of the technology. So I like that. Good to hear. Now, if you could like do this all over again, would you choose a different occupation or would you stick with like teaching and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, I really do love like the education world and being in education, I think is such an important thing. And um, I also really like, if it was anything else, I looking back, I really like um, technology now too, and like working with computers and things. So, you know, if kind of combining um, those two worlds is something I'm, I'm definitely interested in now, okay. I'd say as well. All right, all right. So would you, like in high school, did you ever take any like computer science classes or anything like that? Um, you know, in high school, not, I didn't really take any. I took, uh -huh. I want to say I was, I took yearbooks. So that, and that we kind of use like InDesign and those types of oh, okay, okay. like graphic design type programs. Okay. Um, but then in college at Davis, I did take a few, some, um, like computer science type of classes and like graphic design type of classes. So I, I enjoyed those. So I think kind of the like ed, like ed tech space is really interesting um, to me definitely but but yeah just being in the education world is something that I really enjoy and again I think it's such a great thing to you know help the future in that way. All right that's wonderful to hear then. Now yeah. what influenced you to have like such a passion for education like was it like being in high school or like was it earlier? Yeah um you know I'd say I just have a lot of um you know folks in my family that have been educators and been in the education field for a long time. Um, you know, my dad, um, he's a professor um, at Sacramento State in like counseling psychology. And I have a lot of other uh, family members in the education uh, world and in training. And my mom was in training and education as well. So it's just kind of been a family, family uh, mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. And I also, I've always enjoyed like uh, tutoring and working with students and, and helping um, in that way. Cool, cool. Now, you know, let's stray away from your job and move on to, I guess, your more personal life. So, you know, what's, what's your interest in terms of like music? Yes, awesome. Yes, one of my favorite things. Um, so I've always been a huge fan of like independent um, alternative music. So indie mm -hmm. music, I love, I love all of that. Again, while I was at Davis, I had the chance to uh, volunteer and work a little bit at the the freeform radio station there and I really enjoyed that um so I've been a huge fan of um the Smiths and like you know Morrissey for a long time um I'm super a super fan of like the National um and these types of like indie bands um I also lately I've really liked um Haim their new album was really good um I really like uh Mitski and um also like Fiona Apple and again in my in college, I was able to do some research on women in music, and so that's just been one of my interests for a long time. So, yeah, just a lot of indie music. Mm -hmm. That's so my did your indie music start like like did your interest start in like high school or like even earlier? Yeah, um, probably you know, probably in high school. I was always probably before that. I I listened to a lot of like 
um, like classic rock and those types of genres as well. And, and even some jazz, I really like jazz, but um, kind of my favorite genre definitely say is more of like indie alt type mm -hmm. stuff. So. Uh, have you been to like any concerts? Yeah, yeah, I have. I, I really enjoy seeing live music and, mm -hmm. and it's, you know, hopefully one day when, when things are better, you know, we'll be able to have more concerts again, but yeah, yeah but in the past I've enjoyed, I've been able to see, um, a lot of actually in at Davis, I actually worked at um, Mandavi Center for the Performing Arts. Um, mm -hmm. So that's like um, the big performing arts venue there right on campus. Mm -hmm. So I worked there as like a usher manager type oh, person. Okay. So I worked with, yeah, with like community yeah. volunteers and um, for all the shows. So I was able to see a ton of shows there, everything from like um, operas to oh, okay. Sam, the symphony, all that stuff. But yeah, in terms of concerts, I've, I've seen, um, I've seen Morrissey a couple times. I've seen like Kate Nash a couple times. Um, I've seen uh, like Frank Turner. I've seen him a couple times. So yeah, I love go love going to live music for sure. Right, that's great to hear. Yeah. Um, have you ever wanted to make music like personally? Yeah, you know, I ha I've I definitely have. I've um, that's something like I'd love to do to take. I have I took a few like some guitar lessons in the past, but I haven't had a chance to do that. But that's something like a goal of mine to maybe get back into that. But right. I played piano when I was I was little, but it's mainly been like just from a appreciation like a hobby standpoint. Or something. What's that? Just like a little hobby, I guess. Making music. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. yeah, I just love I just love reading about music, writing yeah. about music, you know, appreciating music, I guess. All right. So, Me as yeah. well. Okay. Now do you drink caffeine? Because caffeine is huge in the high school realm. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So I I do, you know, I've, I've always, um, you know, my, my fiance and I were big, like tea drinkers. We've mm. kind of always been our thing is just tea. We've been to probably most of the tea and coffee places in Phoenix area. Okay. Um, we just love going to like coffee shops, you know? Yeah. Um, so probably more tea normally, but we have, we did get a, like a French press recently and we've been oh, using okay, that. Nice. So now I like coffee too, I guess. <laughs> okay, okay. Do you yeah. like energy drinks? No, not really. I'm not a big energy drink person. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, more just, mm -hmm. I guess, tea and coffee. Yeah. Now with tea and coffee, do you, do you drink it for like the taste or for like the caffeine effect or like both? <laughs> so, um, I would say, gosh, probably the taste. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I definitely say if I, if I have um, like French press or we make some coffee or something, mm -hmm. then probably will help me feel maybe a little more awake sometimes, but mm -hmm. mainly the taste, I'd say. Okay. Uh, yeah. You know, with caffeine, did you drink it in high school? Did you drink caffeine in oh, high school? Could you repeat that one more time? Oh, yeah. Did, did you drink caffeine oh, in, high in high school? school? Yeah, yeah. Oh, in high school? Not really. I wasn't really. Again, I've always just kind of had mainly been like a tea drinker and then mm -hmm. just maybe the last couple of years. Now I have a little bit of coffee too. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> Are there any other beverages that you like really enjoy? Um, you know, not, I mean, again, mainly like this summer, since it's been so hot, it's like, I just got to drink water all day. Yeah. So <laughs> that's, that's mainly the main thing. And then some iced tea is always good. Okay. okay. So, do you like yeah. boba or anything of that oh, sort? Boba. Yeah, I actually do love boba. We, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's right. the thing too, Go, like going, Davis, there were so many, there were a ton of boba plate, like downtown Davis must have had like four or five boba places. So we would, we would go all the time. And yeah, and we've been, there's some good, we've been to a couple of boba places, good ones here in Arizona, but there aren't, it doesn't seem like there are quite as many. There's a share, they opened up a share tea nearby and that's, I like, their tea is pretty good. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah, we don't have the selection like California does, unfortunately. Right, right. <sighs> oh, well. Anyways, with drinks, you know, comes food. And what is your favorite restaurant slash cuisine? Yeah, definitely. So I'm just thinking, like, try to keep it, like, Phoenix-based. Mm -hmm. Um, my, probably my favorite restaurant in Phoenix, I would say, is um, a restaurant called Clever Koi, um, which is in, it's downtown Phoenix. I think there's also a location in uh, Gilbert. Okay. And they have real, they have really good um a pad thai that's really good oh, okay. and they also have really good ramen yeah so they have some things that are really good so I really like 
Clever Koi in Phoenix. And then I also, ever since um, we moved here, we've been going to um, the Persian Room, which is oh, a really, mm -hmm. yeah, if you, if you heard Scottsdale, it. Yep, yep. Yeah, in Scottsdale, yeah. So that's a, that's a, that's definitely a, a kind of a special occasion place, but oh. I love Persian food too. So that's a good one. So Asian food and Persian food? Yeah, I'd say those are probably two of my favorites. Yep. Okay, that's good to hear. Yep. <laughs> uh, how do you like to spend your free time? Yeah, so uh, free time, I mean, I love um, to spend time with uh, my family and um, my fiance and our dog. We have a small Lhasa Apso uh, named Chewy. Okay. And uh, yeah, so we love to hang out with him and uh, we love to go hiking when it's not so hot, um, spend time out, you know, in nature, outside. Um, we enjoy going over, going up to Flagstaff is always fun. Um, yeah, so when, when we can, you know, we enjoy traveling um, and spending time outside, also music. And also lately I've been listening to um, a good amount of like podcasts and mm -hmm. things in my, uh, inside, so. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, since we're during the COVID season, we can't really travel, but where's like your most favorite place that you've been so far? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, let's see, would you, um, like inside in the U.S. Um, or? I guess outside? domestic and international. Okay. Um, oh gosh, let's see. I mean, probably domestic. Um, I've, I love, I've been to Hawaii. I love, mm -hmm. love going to Hawaii. That's always a fun, so yeah, yeah. fun. Um, in California, I love um, Santa Monica, um, and I also love uh, San Francisco area and, and going to the city. It's always a lot of fun. Um, and then I'd say international. Um, I've been to probably I've been to London a couple mm -hmm. of, well, a couple of years ago, and that was a really fun trip. And um, again, I'm a fan of you know, like the royal family and some different you know, British things. So that was a cool experience for me, for right. sure. Now, you know, once COVID passes, where do you see yourself like traveling to? Or where do you hope to travel to? Once it passes, yeah, that's a good question. I know, I, ho I hope it'll, it'll pass soon and yeah. things will be much better. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I would love to, I would love to travel to Italy. Um, I think that would be really cool. Um, just probably a lot of different places in Europe. Um, I think like Greece would be really fun. Um, yeah, I would just I just love to travel like all over and check out check out a lot of different areas. Um, yeah, my my fiance's family originally is from Europe as well, so I'd love to kind of go visit there as well. So yeah, just a lot of different. I'd love to travel all over. Are you like, what, what entices you about traveling? Like, you know, seeing stuff, you know, the food, the culture, or, you know, a mix of everything? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I, yeah, I would just love to travel just, you know, to all different places. What I also think like Japan, I'd love to go there. I think just to see like the culture and, um, you know, the food and the arts and the music. And I, I'm just big into, you know, cultural, cultural items and, and to be able to explore that. And it's just such a, such a unique opportunity and so cool to, to learn about um, the cultures well, and other places. We will get to do that soon. Anyways. I know, I hope so. Uh, what are your favorite movies or TV shows? Yeah, favorite movies or TV shows. Um, let's see, TV shows. Um, we've been watching just lately a lot of like Netflix, um, <laughs> Netflix shows. Um, recently watched um, season two of the Umbrella Academy and that, oh, okay. I enjoyed that <laughs> if you've seen that one yeah that was cool I it was kind of like took place in the um in the 60s so it was kind of they went back in time so it was that was a cool um series I enjoyed that um let's see what else I also I'm a big fan of like one of my favorite all-time shows is Gilmore Girls I love Gilmore Girls um seen that many times um yeah and then movies um, probably my favorite all-time movie is um, a movie called uh, Notting Hill. That's like a classic like rom-com movie. So I love that. But yeah, I'm, I love um, seeing movies and kind of all genres. So cool. Cool. Um, well, what's your favorite genre, by the way? Oh, my favorite like mo uh, movie or uh, I, movie yeah, genre. movie genre is fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, movie genre. Um, I really like 
just movies like with a great um like story like character mm-hmm. development so yeah, i'd say mm-hmm. yeah so like maybe dramas um like um yeah just strong like dramas and with strong um like female characters i definitely like like those kinds of movies so yeah just strong writing strong characters i'd say dramas nice. <laughs> yep. now what do you get annoyed by annoyed by yeah oh yeah that's a <laughs> that's a good one um annoyed by i mean I try to, um, you know, not not get annoyed. You know, try to practice mindfulness as much as I can. But um, I'd say, like, if someone, when folks sometimes aren't like open to, like, accepting, you know, different different cultures or different things, I'd say that I don't like when when people are like closed minded about things. I think that you should always try to be. Um, as open-minded as possible so that that's kind of I would say if I had to say definitely I'd have to agree now would you consider yourself more extroverted or introverted oh would you consider yeah, um, that's okay. so funny because we just um in our college counseling class we just did like our personality yes our personality test so um I would I'm uh, I'm introverted um so that's kind of like my personality type um but I do like, like, you know, being around people and talking to people as well. So, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a in between people say like an ambivert, right. Is kind of in between. Yeah. So I'd say that's, think, that's so who like, I am. Do you think being like an introvert is like a bad thing for school? Cause it's like kind of hard to like, you know, participate in discussions and stuff like that. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I think that um, oftentimes like, in our society kind of, and there's um, a really interesting book on this too called uh, Quiet. And it's a book about how like introverts um, in our society sometimes aren't, you know, as as valued or people kind of say, you know, oh, they're just quiet. Like if you're in a class or something like, oh, you're not, you know, participating. But that book is just about how um, introverts are also very valuable. And we just have to realize that people um, communicate in different ways. And just because, for example, like if a student in a class or something is is quiet or maybe um, doesn't seem like they're participating, they could be thinking about it, right? Or they could just need another um, like opportunity or way to um, be engaged, whether that's writing or whether that's, you know, participating in a smaller group. So I think that, you know, that's kind of like a lot of people think that about introverts, but it's important to um, kind of realize that introverts um, are just like, you know, have a lot of, um, I guess, like value too, you know, yep. so it's kind of an interesting topic, I think. Now, like during your high school years, like, was it hard for you to be like an introvert as well as like, I guess, participate in like social activities sometimes? Yeah, um, you know, not, not really. I mean, I think I, I just kind of connected with mm-hmm. folks that had like similar interests, you know, whether um, that was like music, or um, again in the arts or writing. So I think it was more so about um, just finding like folks that you connect with and people that have similar interests or, or maybe even different interests, but again, are open-minded to, to talking with you and getting to know you. That's good to hear. Now, you know, stress is like really prevalent in high school and college and, you know, with mm-hmm. students in general. How do you personally cope with stress? Yeah, that's, that's such an important point. Um, I think that it's so important. Again, um, I've been able to to do some some research and some reading and everything about like mindfulness and and how it can help us. So whether that's integrating like mindfulness based practices into your daily life, I think can be so important. Like you know, guided breathing and um, visualization and these different uh, techniques. I also personally, I I really like um, to do um, before you know. COVID and everything, I, I really enjoyed going to spin classes and cycling. So that was something I really enjoy. And, and now I can do that at home. So, so I've been enjoying doing that. So that's a big like exercise, I think can be a big stress relief and a big help as well. Now, you know, like us being high school students, what do you think we should be doing, you know, with college admissions and stuff like that? What should we do to like calm ourselves down? <laughs> yeah, um, you know, I think Again, just uh, for any age and, and for students who are working on their college admissions and call to start to build these kind of mindful practices um, just in your day-to-day life, whether that's, you know, taking 
um, a few moments to, to do a guided breathing or to do some medit um, kind of guided meditations, I think can be so, so helpful. Um, and also, again, I think just spending time um, with your friends and your family, kind of talking it out and, and talking about your college options and, and how you're feeling about everything, I think is big, a big help. And, and again, I think um, in, our, in our college counseling class, I think we're going to do some kind of creative projects as well, whether that's making like mood boards or um, kind of some creative expression, I think can help as well with kind of um, dealing with any of that stress. Yeah, that, that's definitely a good thing that I think, you know, our entire high school audience should really, you know, pay attention to. And I'm sure that'll help them in the future. Anyways, thank you for coming on here and, you know, giving us an interview. And we're really appreciative of what you've done so far. Yeah, thank you so much, Jonathan. I appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to getting started. All right.